Good day, friends. It is I, host Eric, host talking to fans, people, and bringer of the good news. Have you heard the good news? The good news is that I'm responding to a comment. Will you not, though, Lady Pants? <coughs> Will you, can you not do that, though? Can you just be okay with just staying here and not being fussy about things? Huh? What am I doing? <coughs> oh, right. I'm looking for that thing. Alright, so I'm responding today to a comment by Lady Pants McGee. She's an ENTP. And she says, interesting comment, she says, Choosing an ISFJ for a romantic relationship would not be an option for me, an ENTP female. I see Effie as fussy and very feminine. Making decisions based on what others think or expect represents weakness to me, not an attractive quality in a mate. ISFJs are natural caretakers, but they expect a high level of support in return, especially from a significant other. We ENTPs seek to use our Effie in meaningful ways, so I can see how the urge to fill that need in another person could initially be fulfilling, but it is beyond my desired capacity to stay in long term. Also, I like to be free to factor in Effie in my decisions as I see fit. If I had to constantly compromise with my sp spouse, I would feel like I was back home with my mother. Um, I can't decide whether you two, whether you are just love struck or if maybe the ISFJ duality thing works better for ENTP males. I have many ISFJ friends and coworkers. Yada yada yada. Okay, so good comment, excellent notions in general, and interesting to hear. <coughs> I would like to respond to it. So, first of all, let me just say, I think ISTJ is another viable option for ENTPs. They are another SI DOM. And that's part of what I, I object to a little bit in the comment is, we're not FE seeking, and neither are they. So, she's not, I'm not deferring to her on FE, and I'm not providing her FE either. Instead, she's better at FE than me by a little bit by a substantial amount in real time. In terms of keeping everybody happy, she's better at it uh, managing communications like that. So for example, in my debate business, I have a way of being abrasive and turning off the parents a bit and having them not like me because I'm kind of an asshole to them and I don't care about them. And they, I make that clear when I talk to them because they are annoying me with their fucking questions. Anyway, Kimberly helped me substantially in talking to the parents on about the talk the uh, tournament of champions trip and trying to smooth things over a bit and you know yada 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 <coughs> so that's an example of how Effie's I kind of delegate Effie to her I don't defer to her on Effie and to the extent that her Effie does cause deference for me it's in the following form I'll be like oh <laughs> fuck no I'm gonna go over there and tear those fuckers a new one and then Kimberly will go like but, 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 and then I'll go, okay, well, I don't want you to worry. I'm not, you don't need to worry. I'm not going to do like, that. Ah, 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 ah. and then because she worried and because I needed to prove her wrong, then I go and actually do it correctly. Whereas if she hadn't worried the way she had, if in fact she said, oh, the hell you will, Eric, then, oh, the hell, the hell I will. I'm going to go do it even more. So that's why ISFJ is a necessary, um, dual for, for me as an ENTP, but I think it works well for ENTPs in general, is the manner in which her FE uh, impacts me is she's, she errs on the side of caution all the time. Sometimes we need to not err on the side of caution with the FE, but she doesn't battle me over it. She just expresses worry. And I'm very responsive to that. Now, and same is true with the TI. Um... She's not as active in the TI in the moment as I am, but we have alternate preferences in terms of values and absolute and instrumental values. Her absolute TI value is metaphysical. In other words, maintain TI consistency over time and having a, a, a long-term node consistency. My TI priority is uh, physical, namely TI consistency within the moment, but it doesn't matter. Once, once this node's done, I could be inconsistent between nodes. <coughs> as a consequence and we're opposite on FE we really balance each other well on FE and TI we both 
care about Effie a lot, as she as a tool function, me as a hidden agenda, and we both care about TI a lot, her as a hidden agenda, me as a tool function. Works well. The seeking part is the SI. I seek SI, she provides it. She seeks NE, I provide it. And there's no problems there at all. That doesn't mean the relationship is totally free from conflict. We do bicker some. And we bicker mostly over over me not leaving well enough alone, primarily. But uh, it's a little more complicated than that, I guess. It's like we bicker over, I want her to explain things more to me. And she thinks she's already explained it enough. Is that an adequate explanation for what we bicker over, Ken? You can, just so you know, if you want to be heard, really, you have to lean in. Cause yeah. <laughs> he likes to pull shit like that. What was the joke you tell you? You told me a funny ass joke earlier. Yeah, like what's oh, like what's behind that? What's behind that door? <laughs> no, what's behind that door over there? And she's like, oh, it's another bathroom. Oh. Yeah, it's just really dirty. I, I haven't get, been able to clean it. Uh, I was like, oh, Cam, we have been, this is what I was thinking, I didn't react quite like this, but Cam, we've been sharing this bathroom with fucking Colin. It's been a nightmare. I got a lie. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. And you mean you have a second bathroom in here? <laughs> but then I'm like, Cam. And she's like, open the door. It was just a closet. You know? <laughs> That's the sort of joke I appreciate. Because she did it so she did it so uh, straight facedly, and I make those kind of jokes too. I like to say things that are patently false, as though they were completely true, just in regular conversation. Sometimes those jokes get missed. Sometimes they get picked up like an hour later or something. You know, <laughs> those are fun. Um, but okay, so what other points of conflict do we have? Well. The thing, the male-female thing in terms of ISFJ, ENTP, uh, my daughter's an ENTP, she's in a relationship with an ISFJ, <coughs> and she does note that the that Miguel gets very frustrated with his own TE failings because he's supposed to be good at that shit and she's supposed to be bad at it. She's probably better than me and, and Kim at it, and so I don't know. Uh, the thing is, I'm bad at TE in general, but I'm used to being the worst at it, or the one getting scolded about it or something. Because I'm not really bad at it, it's just I always want to prioritize playing around over efficiency. And when I apply myself, I can be efficient. And Kim helps a lot with that because she's policing me on my TE because I tease her about it. So as soon as I started teasing her about it, her FE kicked into high gear and she started keeping score. And so anytime I fuck up TE, She's like, which makes her metacognitive about TE. What have you, what do you, what have you learned about TE since you met me? Well, like you said, to be more aware of it. So what do you think it is? It's just, I mean, I've described it a lot of different ways, but. Problem solving efficiently. Yeah. Goal, goals, following, setting a goal and getting there as, as smartly as possible. Um. Neither of us like goals, and we both hate being policed in this area. Like, our goals are things like, we really want to get this house organized and everything have a place. And our other goals are like, 10 years from now, we'd like to live in, we'd like to move to Ventura and be, <coughs> and be rich. And when I say, okay, well, let's start making money, Kim's like, let's clean. I'm like, okay, let's clean. <laughs> That sounds fun, too. Uh, that sounds more fun than making money. Something about work that makes money is always the least fun kind of work. Anyway. You know what's a lot of fun? Buying things from the Talking With Fans People store. A lot of fun. I call it Impulse Buys for Intuitives. I'm going to put up some new items there today, including some very special Swedish matches that I think you're going to want to take a look at. They're matches that have contained within them the metaphysical essence of the fiery map gas flame to dealer's truth. Does that sound like the sort of product you'd want to buy, Kim? Yeah. Yeah, instantly, sure. 
Uh, also, some digital objects will be going up there today, hopefully. Uh, some songs and some other PDFs, MP3s, things like that, that will be available for the low, low price of whatever it says. And we have t-shirts going out today. We got t-shirts. We're mailing t-shirts today. We are. We got a mail going out. And um, if you are a patron or would like to become a patron, that would be appreciated. I could use the cash. Um, Kimberly expects me to feed her caviar every morning. I'm like, the, you should see the pile of empty caviar cans <laughs> outside the window. <laughs> she only gets, she only wants the most expensive Russian stuff too. So, <coughs> you know, please help support Kimberly's caviar habit. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Dog Good Fans people, and thank you, Ian's Pichek, whatever your name was, Nash Reed or something like that, Nash in your teeth. What's your name? Something fancy pants, girl pants. Nurak V125. That's not a very feminine name, Nurak. <laughs> you need to be chicks like Delilah too. She's just not very feminine. Uh, she's hot. I mean, everybody thinks like everybody, every all the boys are like, oh my god, you're impossible. You're you're gorgeous, yada yada. But she's not very feminine, really. She's always been like, like me, kind of like, fuck yeah. She got that kind of attitude, you know? ENTP chicks are cool. I don't know how you guys figure it out with dudes. I don't know. I wouldn't want to be with an ENTP chick because neither of us could give too many fucks. See, I get along best with them. With ENTPs? Mm -hmm. Tell us about it, actually. That, I'm sorry, see, as my normal ENTP failure, I forget to include other people because I'm busy talking. Can't really tell us about ENTPs and your perceptions of them. My perception is it's just as a girl easier to hang out with them because they're not so dramatic. We're not so dramatic? As a girl, my friends. Oh, your friends are ES are ENTPs? A, a couple of them, yeah. You think so? Not very feminine. Ah. Oh, so you're saying it's easier to hang out with chicks that are not very feminine. Yeah. Well, I agree with you there, 100%. Uh, it's much easier to hang out with chicks who are more tomboyish. I find you um, both. Yeah. You're both very feminine and very tomboyish. Yeah. And it depends on your the moment and your mood. Mm -hmm. Like, what, was, what were you getting super squeamish and, and weird about? Oh, I was saying sometimes I feel like I look like a... Like a lesbian. Oh, well, that was not what I was thinking <laughs> oh, about. No, well, we're t no remember you were saying, what were you saying about me being squeamish? And I was saying the other day, sometimes I feel a little squeamish about, like, when I, because you said I'm both. Oh, yeah. That's not what you're talking about? Well, no, I wasn't really talking about your look. I was saying, oh. like, you're, like. What am I, what do you mean squeamish? Well, like when I try to, you didn't eat my food that I make because it was too oily. Oh. And you wouldn't have McDonald's last night because you do, you think the meat's not it's meaty real. enough or something. It's not real. It's not real enough. Like that kind of squeamish. <laughs> um, that's that's feminine. Whereas in the ways that you're not squeamish or masculine or tomboyish, like uh, you're not afraid to get your hands dirty. Like you can we, we no. we're putting a handle on shit. We're carrying shit. You can carry. You're not afraid to lift and carry and and do manual labor and stuff like that. Um. And I like to fish. You like to fish. I I don't drink alcohol, but I can imagine sitting back and throwing sitting down and throwing back a few beers with you would be great, you know. And uh, and y you're a little more cor you're a little more coarse around the edges than you ever display to anybody. What do you mean? I mean. Behind that, that adorable, innocent little visage, you have a few dirty thoughts in your head now and again. What? What? Remember earlier today I was cleaning up something, and what did you do? You made a comment about my butt crack, because you were looking at it. You weren't looking at what I was picking up. No. You weren't thinking to yourself, how could we be more efficient in executing the goal of carrying these things? You were thinking about my buttocks, young yes. lady. You were. That's what I'm talking about. You think about my butt too much. 
it distracts you. It does. That's why I'm going to start wearing a burqa. No. No? You're not wearing a burqa today either. <laughs> the, the camera doesn't doesn't show the, uh, the cleavage. So you guys get to miss out on it. I don't. Thanks for watching Dragon Fans, people. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. And yeah, I just kick all kinds of ass. I don't care if you're male, if you're female, whatever kind of ENTP you are. Get yourself an ISFJ if you want. ISCJ works out fine, I bet. Because I, my friend Cameron and I get along great. I could imagine being in a relationship with a chick ISTJ. She's not going to give you much loving, really. Not like warmth, not like gushy gush. But, you know, she'll have good posture. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs>